Raise your hand if you've never compared yourself to anyone in your life. No one? That's what I thought. And so, you know, I'm just gonna leave it here. Let's talk about it. Good morning, good morning, you guys. If you don't know me, and you probably don't because I'm no big personality, my name is Maya, and today, you guys, we are conquering the topic of comparison. And especially something that's super close to my heart, comparison in social media. Because, let's be honest, in this age, if you have social media accounts, you're probably facing it to some extent. And by the way, this microphone, it's not even working. I'm just doing it because it looks professional and it makes me feel like I'm an actual podcaster and I actually am doing something. I'm, I'm professional, I'm an expert, you know, even though I'm not. So, you know, anything I say here is my personal experience. Take it with a pinch of salt, take whatever you want to take, leave whatever you want to leave, and let's get straight into this topic. First of all, I just want you to know that if you struggle with comparison, comparison on social media, comparison in real life, you are not the only one. All of us struggle with it to some extent. It's such a universal topic, but I feel like it's not talked about enough. In this video, I think I just want to kind of share my experience with you because I've been on my own journey for the last year or so where it was like, I was in the middle of it, you know? I was really struggling with comparison on a daily basis, I'd say. And so I feel like right now I'm in this point the wind is so crazy right now, but going back, I have been struggling with myself and I think right now I'm at a point where I'm in a good place and I feel like I've learned my strategies to deal with comparison. And so in this video, I just wanna kind of, I guess, discuss the topic and, and give you my advice on, on how to stop comparing yourself to others on social media and start appreciating your life a bit more. So let's get straight into it. And the first thing I want to talk about is why are we even comparing ourselves in the first place? Something that I always say whenever I talk about this topic, whenever I talk about it, you know, with other people or just here on my channel, is that we as people were never meant to see so many other people's lives. So because of social media and because of all the content that we are consuming every single day, we are truly observing the lives of thousands, if not millions of people every single day through scrolling, through watching stories, through those little silly scrolls on your breaks at work or at school. We all do it, let's be honest. And we were never meant to see that. In the past, you know, let's say our parents, they could only see the lives of those around them. So their community. And usually it was a handful of people, like 20 maybe, max? truly max. And as I said, for us, it's thousands of people. And so this already puts us in a position where we are just more likely to compare ourselves because we are presented with so many things and so many options and so many successes of other people and something that I heard very recently. And I think it literally explains like perfectly why people at our age, young people these days, are struggling so much with feeling lost and feeling like they don't know what to do with themselves. The reason is that we are presented with so many choices because we see all of those people on social media doing this and that, being social media managers, being influencers, being entrepreneurs, being anything they want, being nomad lifestyle creators, whatever, just doing so many different things that we're like, wait, so wh wh what am I supposed to do? Like, what's, what's the path for me? We are presented with so much choice that we get this sort of a decision fatigue that we're like, I don't know. Like, I, I have so many options that I don't know where, what to choose. Like, there's just too much. Like, I can't do it. It's just so confusing. And that's why we feel lost because in the past, it used to be just like this one correct path to go. So, you know, you go to school, then you go to university, and then you start working, and that's it. And these days, there's just so much that we can choose from. We don't have to go to university anymore. Like, it feels like, okay, like, you, I don't have to do it. There are so many options, you know? So maybe I can consider that, but maybe at the same time, I wanna go to the university and just go to a normal job. What about, what if I get an internship, you know? like just so many options and that's what makes us feel lost and i just think this explanation is just literally it's explaining it so well and when we see all of those people and all of those shiny lifestyles they're living we're just like wow like 
maybe that's the right path. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I should be doing what they are doing. We are starting to question ourselves and question our choices and question our life. And that leads me to the question of, are those lifestyles that we see on social media actually that shiny? And I think I have a pretty good perspective here to give you because I'm a creator myself. You know, I've been creating for three plus years on Instagram, now on YouTube and TikTok. And so I feel like I have sort of a good perspective on it. I see it from both sides, you know, as a consumer as well as as a creator. And also I have a lot of friends that are also creators. And so obviously we share our perspectives on it. And you know how so many people always say, you know, social media is fake. And to an extent, I agree with it. And I'm going to explain in a second, but you know, I feel like fake very often kind of implies that what people are showing online is not true, that they are lying to us. And it's not that, you know, there are so many creators, like even on the top of my head, I can name so many creators that I know are very genuine and what they're creating is very genuine. But I think what people are trying to say when they say, you know, social media is like, obviously, you know, there are models, there are people, not even models, but people who are, you know, editing themselves and putting all of those filters and yeah, and saying that, oh no, there is no filter, there is no edits here, it's no filter, hashtag no filter, none of that. I'm not talking about those people. There are those people too, but I'm not talking about them because I don't follow them. But what I think very often is meant by saying social media is fake is that we are only showing a very small part of our lives on social media. I don't know how about you, but if you, let's imagine you are a creator, if you're not. If you had a shitty day, like truly, like you don't even want to look at your phone or actually <laughs> you want to spend your whole day on TikTok. You don't want anyone to talk to you. You don't want anyone to even like approach you. Like you just want everyone to leave you alone and you just want to sit in your shit. You know, like we all have those days. If you had a day like that, would you share it on social media? Would you feel... Like, oh yeah, let's take a picture and, you know, share how I'm feeling. No. And it's not that you're trying to not show that part of yourself to, to your community. It's not that you're fake. It's just that personally, for example, me, when I have a day like that, I don't even want to look at social media. Like, it just makes me feel so... I don't want to post because I am feeling shit. And I don't want to post when I'm feeling shit, you know? Like... It's not a matter of, oh, I'm trying to hide it. It's a matter of, I really don't feel like taking picture of my, pictures of myself. I really don't feel like showing up right now. And that's what I mean by, you know, um, social media is a highlight reel. That when I'm crying, I'm not gonna record myself crying because that's the last thing I think about when I'm feeling this way, you know? And so when we share on social media, we share just a little teeny tiny bit of our lives, you know, the, the interesting part. And actually this is something that I, personally struggle with, especially on YouTube now, thinking that my life is too boring to be shared because, you know, my, most of my days are pretty similar. And I feel like, does anyone actually want to watch me show the same things over and over again? Because my life is pretty boring, you know? But then I'm starting to realize, and hopefully it's gonna keep on growing that realization on me because it's still definitely work in progress, that everyone has a boring life. And it's, in a way, that's what everyone is showing but because those lives that they are showing are different compared to ours because obviously everyone has a different life we see it as interesting i don't know if it, it, i said it clearly honestly but let's say i see i watch someone's videos every single week and if i really pay attention i'm gonna notice that actually they are showing pretty similar things but because it's not my life it's their life it's so interesting and so i'm starting trying to like literally put in my head that my life might be boring to me, but for others, it's gonna be interesting. And so I just need to kind of get comfortable with that, I guess. But I kind of got on a tangent here. Going back to the topic of social media being fake, what I'm basically trying to say is that if I, as a creator, don't want to show you something, you're not gonna see it. And so what we see on social media is just a, it's 5% of someone's life. You don't see it all, you see it what they want to show you. And obviously we all want to show our good moments, we all, all, all want to show how we are hanging out with our friends, how we are traveling, how we are succeeding and all of that. But there is so much struggles that are going that are going on behind the scenes. And even if someone talks about their struggles, they definitely don't talk about them all. So that's something to keep in mind. And another thing I want to mention, 
from like a creator's perspective is how much work goes into content. When you see someone's daily routine on, on reels or, or my morning routine, what I eat in a day, whatever, you might not be aware of how much work goes into content like that. It's not that I just set up my camera and start doing something. No. There is, you know, you look for the right perspective, for it to be aesthetic, for this or that. And so what I want you to know that 99% of things that you see online are in some way, shape or form curated. It's not real life. It's not like I just set up my camera and get on with my day, you know? I set it up, I look if it looks nice, I take some, you know, some test shots to see if it looks nice. I re-record it a few times and then choose the clips that look best. There's so much work that goes into it that we don't see and I'm guessing many of us are not aware of. And all that I'm trying to say with that is that it's not real, but it's also not fake. Cause those creators, they're not trying to lie to you. They are just trying to make content that satisfied them and their aesthetic sort of a itch, you know, an aesthetic itch and kind of fulfill them and make them proud. But also potentially if that's someone's, you know, focus, grow their following so it needs to you know catch people's attention and whether it's through a hook whether it's for aesthetic um image you know or maybe some people also kind of base their self-esteem on what they're showing so obviously they are trying to show their life from the best perspective they're kind of curating the narrative a little bit just to not only show people um their life but also just kind of lift their self-esteem up and be like oh yeah my life is so good you know even though maybe it's not but by in a way lying to you guys they are kind of lying to themselves as well you know there are just so many factors that can influence how someone creates content and how they show up online but it is so hard to be full-on authentic online even if you try to be so that's another thing to keep in mind that it's really really almost impossible to be fully authentic online. And another anecdote that I have here in this point is I listened to this podcast. I think I mentioned it in one of my videos, my previous videos, but I'm gonna say it again in case you did not watch this one. I listened to this podcast and the guy was talking about comparison in the podcast. And he was saying that if you're not ready to take on 100% of someone's life, and mind me, you do not see those 100% online. You can think that you see 100 but i can tell you you definitely do not so if you're not ready to take 100 percent of someone's life and let's say it can look like you know someone has this amazing successful business they are doing so well they are earning well they seem to have it all together you know they are so successful in their career but then because they are so successful and they are traveling so much or they are working so much their relationship with their partner or with their family might be really suffering from it. And obviously they're not showing it because let's say their account focus is mostly on their business, you know? So if you're not sure if you could take 100% of someone's life, and I'm just gonna mention it here, everyone has their struggles. And even if it seems like someone is so happy and, and they are doing so well, they definitely do have something, even if they are not showing it to you. If you're not ready, again, I'm, I feel like I'm saying it for the third time, but if you're not ready to take on 100% of someone's life, you cannot compare yourself to someone. You can inspire yourself with their actions. You can be like, yeah, this looks so cool, this motivates me. But if you wouldn't be okay with taking all of their successes, but also all of their struggles, then you don't want their life. You really do not want their life and you shouldn't compare yourself because just like you have some struggles, they also do have them. And just because they are different doesn't mean they have it better necessarily. You might think that they have it better, but it's not always true. So it's better to inspire yourself rather than compare yourself. And I know it is super crazy to do that. And it's easy to say, oh, you know, just stop comparing yourself. Just, just, just inspire yourself with those people. It's hard and I get it. I know it myself, like from my own experience. And so I want to give you some kind of advice or some, I want to share some techniques that really worked for me um, when it comes to, you know, conquering that comparison trap and conquering just comparing myself with other people on social media. And I know it might seem harsh, but I think one of the best things you can do for yourself is when you see 
or when you realize that you start comparing yourself to someone or you start to look at someone's content a bit too much and follow them or at least mute them for a little bit. You know, I'm not saying unfollow them forever, but until you get over that comparison, you need to unfollow them. You need to stop seeing their content. You need to stop seeing their face and just focus on your own life. So for me personally, I noticed this pattern that I always have someone that I start really looking up to. And at first it starts as, wow, this person really motivates me. This person really inspires me. They are so cool but it quickly turns into this unhealthy comparison. And I start to be like, oh, I want to be like them. Like, what can I do? How can I improve? How can I change what I do to be like them? Because they are doing it so well. I love how they're doing something and, and I want to do it the same way. So it quickly turns to be unhealthy. And that's when I know like, oop, it's going in the wrong direction. I need to unfollow. I need to kind of distance myself from that person for a little bit and let myself go back to what's true to me, to my own voice. And so stop consuming all that content. Stop trying to imitate other people, saying that, oh, they're doing it so well, so I should probably imitate them if I want to get the results that they have. No, you need to do it your own way because we don't want another Kim Kardashian. You know, like, let's say, I said it wrong, but let's say Kim Kardashian is like, sh sh you want to be the next Kim Kardashian, but the world doesn't need another Kim Kardashian. They need you, okay? So not, don't try to be Kim Kardashian. Try to be yourself. Kim Kardashian can inspire you, can motivate you and be like, okay, she's so hardworking. Let's, let's, let's get it on, like, let's start. But the world doesn't need another Kim Kardashian. They need you, they need your voice. They need whatever is within you, okay? And so try to get that voice of yours out because if there is anything that's gonna get you to where you want to be, it's what's there, what's inside, not what everyone else is doing. So yeah, I definitely have to say that what helped me is unfollowing or muting people, but also just limiting the amount of content that I'm seeing. Obviously I'm not perfect. There are days where I scroll a lot, but just being a bit more intentional with the consumption of social media is definitely a good first step to take um, if you're really struggling with comparison recently. And that takes me to the second point, which is journaling. And I have to say that I am not the best with that because I always say to my therapist, I'm just lazy in that sense. Like whenever I feel shit, the last thing I want to do is sit down and write it on a piece of paper. Like I'm gonna do anything. I'm gonna go for a walk. I'm gonna do this and that, but I cannot get myself to sit down and just write down my feelings. But whenever I do it, it really does wonders. Just getting it out, out of your head and onto a piece of paper, it's just, it's magical. It does something to me, you know? And so just writing down, okay, yeah, I'm feeling this way. I feel like this person is better than me. I feel like what they're doing is amazing. And I, why am I not here? Write it all down and kind of try to counter argument with yourself a little bit. So be like, oh, they're better than me. And then think with your logical brain, like get into there, okay? And think, is it actually true? It's not. I'm good. I'm just, let's say, you know, that person is on level 51 and I'm on level two. Like I'm just a beginner. I need to let myself be a beginner. I need to let myself, you know, be bad so I can be better later on. Because those people that we are looking up to, they started at some point too, and they were shit at what they're doing as well. They were also a beginner in the past. So let yourself a beginner and counter argument with yourself. Just kind of argue with yourself a little bit on a piece of paper. And why on a piece of paper and not, you know, in your notes app or something? Is because if you're not able to do a simple equation in your head and you need to use a calculator or you need to write it down on a piece of paper, and many of us do, how can you solve such a complicated mental issue of, you know, of comparison and an identity in your head? You know, I heard this, this, this little comparison recently and I really resonated with it. How can you solve an identity issue, a mental health issue in your mind if you can't even solve a simple equation? It is just too true. <laughs> but write it all down, write your feelings and you'll see that over time, when you push yourself to write it down, it's 
gonna get better and kind of like those connections in your brain and those approaches that you have are gonna start slowly changing and just know that you're not alone if you're struggling with writing it all down and motivating yourself to write it all down because I am too and the last little advice that I have is don't keep it inside okay I know it's you know especially if you live alone or if you maybe don't surround yourself with that many people it might not be your first instinct to talk to people but it makes such a big difference to just voice your worries and voice your struggles out loud you know um just talking about it and sharing your experiences not only validates it because let's say whenever i talk to my friends about what I'm feeling, I very often get the feedback of, oh my God, I'm feeling the same exact thing. And we kind of just chat about it and talk about it and share our ways of dealing with it. And you quickly realize, oh shit, like I'm not different. Like so many people struggle with it and yet they look so good together and they look like they have it all figured out. And it turns out, oh yeah, none of us have it all figured out. And so talking about it can really help you just feel better. and kind of release those negative emotions and this pressure that you put on yourself. So yeah, I think that's all I have for today. I hope this video was helpful for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Share with you, tell me if you've struggled with comparison and maybe your ways of, of you know dealing with it. I would love to hear it all. Also, if you watched this video up until this moment, you're a star. And so let me know. And guys, thanks so much for watching it once again. And I'll see you next week with another video. Bye.